I was talking to you as well just before we were talking about various injuries, various operations we've had over the years. Yeah. What's your worst injury? What's the one that really well, sort of devastated you, man? You know, like I told you, talking before the show, anytime, I didn't realize it's the first time I had my first shoulder surgery. I never even had a tooth pulled uh, or filled at that point and uh, woke up from it. And I was fine until I thought, like, mind any pain. And as soon as my brain engaged, my whole body started convulsing in pain. It was extraordinary. Anytime you do, uh, this is the, the orthopod to be that I uh, prepared for and didn't go to, uh, for after I got there. Uh, anytime you have bone surgery, bones are extremely innervated. And so, you, it's, as you found out, incredibly painful. Mm. Uh, but the worst injury I ever had, uh, thank God I didn't require surgery for, was the fractured palate. Uh, a, the, the roof of your mouth, you see the line that goes down the center of your mouth, that's your palate up under there, it's cartilage. And Sabu had done a, you know, a, a, a dive of uh, Enziguri on, uh, through a table, uh, a plunk, a plunk, I mean, through a table, but the table didn't break, you know, from the ring apron to the uh, railing and landed here. <laughs> so it almost knocked me out. It didn't go completely out, but when I woke up, it was not extremely painful at that point, so my face hurt. And that night, it felt like these three teeth were bad. I, I wanted them yanked. I was thinking about yanking them. I had bags of ice and just like holding there. And uh, finally went and had the uh, the first dentist I went to gave me a shot of Novocaine, thinking that would calm it down. Well, when he stuck the needle in the roof of my mouth, it just set it right off again. And I almost blacked out driving home. So my ex-wife's next mother's next door neighbor, uh, friends of the family, she worked for a a maxillofacial guy and he was leaving to go to Paris as I remember and he said run him over real quick and they did a pan scale and he came walking out I'm sitting in the in the waiting room he came out and grabbed my head and said do not open your mouth <laughs> and <laughs> the way they fixed that is mine was non-displaced so it broke and went back like that if it does this then the way they fix that they pull your lip back cut your lip and then they pull your face back and fix it from over top the wire and I was like man that sounds Way too much like Frankenstein. So, uh, yeah, but the, all the people say, like, on a scale of one to 10, that was a 35. It mm. was incredible to pain. <laughs> Do you know, uh, I, was, I was saying to you this before as well. I finally started getting around to watching uh, Dope Sick and, uh, yeah. and the sign that they gave you, you know, the little piece of paper that says, with a happy face to a frowny face, one to 10, where's your pain? I yeah. always find yeah. a bit. Uh, Man, how they disseminated all that all that stuff through the hospitals and stuff. I know we're not talking about dope sick, but uh, what was your first what was your first major injury then that you just uh, remember thinking, oh, that's icky, and you just never suffered that kind of thing before? It, 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 you know, again, in wrestling back then, like we were trained to because you didn't get paid if you didn't work, so you go unless you really, really can't. And the first injury that I had that necessitated a hospital trip was in UWF uh, wrestling Mark Laurinaitis, uh, Animal and uh, Johnny Ace's brother. Uh, I think he went by Terminator. Yeah. Um, and I did a Lou Thez on it, Thez Press. And when I did, the way he came down, I didn't feel it. Uh, but, you know, I'm on him punching me, he throws me off. And when I went to get up, I went to make fists, and my hands didn't feel right. I looked down on this finger. These two fingers were, like, back like this. And I just think they grabbed him and, like, sort of pushed him under didn't feel it. They would come to the dressing room. And, you know, once you calm down and get back, then the adrenaline's not flowing. That was like the first that, uh, you know, I was in a cast for a while. Uh, it, it, you know, there's always those kind of little injuries, you know, strains, sprains, even like, you know, fractures and stuff you can tape up. But uh, the, the first serious injuries to me were in uh, WCW. Whenever I blew, oddly enough, Bluefield, West Virginia, right down the road here, uh, I was wrestling. I, it might have been a tag, but it might have been a single with Bobby Eaton. And the Bluefield building is like an, it's set up like an arena, but it's a lot smaller, probably a third of the size of a regular arena. And as a result, they had slid the, the, the mats in. They were only, instead of like the three, four feet they usually are, it was only about a foot and a half out. And I used to do a thing where I would vault to the top rope, you know, drop kick the baby to the heel. Bobby would take the bump to the floor. I'd run and vault to the top rope and do a cross body to Bobby on the floor. Always phenomenal. Uh, just everyone knows my my love for uh, for Bobby Eaton, but because you know the, the you know how, you know that kind of physics, a two hundred and thirty pound guy coming down. When he hit, when I hit him, 
he went straight down on my knee pad. It just happened to work down during the match. Didn't realize it. And my knee ground into the uh, into the concrete. And it didn't break or anything, but there was a ton of blood clots. And I had to go to uh, Georgia, which getting, you know, I'm in a straight leg brace of so getting in my car and driving to the airport, getting through the airport, getting on the plane uh, was pretty tough. And then I get there and there, now my doctor in Pittsburgh said like, he wanted it settled down for a couple of days so he could get a good, good look at it and told me, like, he knew I was going to Georgia to see WCW's doctor. And he said, okay, it's fine. Let, let him examine you. No procedures. So this guy comes in. He's looking at it. And he said, oh, you know, okay, hold on. He gets a needle out. Whoa. So my doctor said, and he had a couple nurses come in. It sounds like I'm making this up. A couple male nurses came in and like, put their hands on my shoulders and started sticks the needle in. Now, it takes Novocaine, you know, Four or five, ten minutes to kick in. He stuffed the Novocaine in or Xylocaine, whatever it was. Turned around, put it down, picked up a scalpel, turned back and whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop. And he cut and then he took this great big hook needle and stuck it in there. And he pulled this big glob, this big bloody glob of a clot out. Oh. And, uh, you know, so I was fine after that, but that was, you know, uh, I wasn't able to wrestle for a couple of weeks. So over the years, you know, I think my career, it's uh, 29 broken bones, 18 surgeries, 11 concussions, but only two of them, you know, high grade concussions. And, and that was plenty. I want no more. I still, I do crosswords every day and stuff to make sure the brain's still working. But, uh, you know, I've seen the, the after effects to a lot of these guys. I had one injury that you had that I didn't realize until very recently is that I think you suffered some sort of larynx injury when wrestling Razor Ramon. Well, what was the circumstances of that? Was it clothesline or something? Yes, uh, we were in uh, Canada. Was this the Winnipeg? Was this the Winnipeg pay per view? I, I believe so. Yeah, and uh, I know we were in Canada, so I, I won't use any names. But one of the guys let me. Well, I better not say anything about this because they'll be able to go back and see the records. Uh, let's just say we did something a little less than legal. Uh, <laughs> we being the boys in the health system, but uh, yeah, I had. Didn't at that point didn't even this is before my medical school training. Uh, I had no idea you could fracture your larynx, and uh, same thing as the, the roof of my mouth. The, the larynx has a bunch of C rings reversed, and uh, those cracked, and uh, it changed my voice. And to this day, I still can't like get up over a certain like you know some people like get their voice up just jokingly high. I still can't do that. But for like about a year afterwards. I sort of sounded like Johnny Ace, you know, and I think that's what Johnny had happened, which permanently altered his voice. Crikey! So I mean, yeah, I, I was thinking it was like I, I mean, I didn't know if you like smoke back in the day or something like that. I thought that was the way to change your voice, but just yeah. have some, no, some I, terrible trauma. Yeah, yeah, and not fun. It's, you know, as you can imagine, you swallow about a thousand million times a day, right? It's constantly swallowing spit or whatever. And every time it was just, you know, think of the worst sore throat you ever had times 10. And that was, you know, yeah. sipping water, whatever. It was, uh, it was awful for, for my, I'd say about a three to five days, really, really bad pain. And then I like, sort of waned and then the voice issues. Did you, uh, did you fracture the hyoid there as well? Or did that no, get away? No, the that? hyoids are, are bones on the sides of the, uh, you know, on the sides, uh, very fine little tiny bones. And uh, easier, mostly when like somebody gets strangled, that happens. Luckily, mine was this. Uh, so, you know, when you feed into a clothesline, you're, you know, you're turning your face slightly, but you're still getting the Adam's apple pretty much straightforward. 